I didn't know where the house was. I didn't know how much the house was. I didn't know anything about it. And I ended up buying that house. This car right over here, I put two years ago and it's in my garage now. I don't think just because you cut out a picture or because you imagine, okay, that I don't believe that. We do a lot of brain training through our programs to help people really create the neural patterns in their brain. KC 여러분, 안녕하세요. 오늘 제가 정말 모시고 싶었던 사람을 모시게 됐어요. 여러분 부의 해답이라는 책을 얼마 전에 제가 리뷰를 했었는데 보셨나요? 이 책은요 뉴욕타임스의 베스트셀러인데 제가 이 책을 공동 저자 존 아사라프님을 모셔왔어요. 이분은 정말 제가 예전부터 만나고 싶었던 분이었습니다. 이분은요 모두 수천억 원의 매출을 내는 총 다섯 개 회사를 설립하신 기업가 이시기도 하고요. 그리고 그중 회사를 나스닥에 상장을 하고 환화로 약 4조 원 이상의 매출까지 성장을 시켰다고 하십니다. 와 정말 대단한 것이요. 이분은 부동산, 소프트웨어, 내가 비즈니스 컨설팅 등 아주 다양한 사업 분야에서 모두 성공을 이루 신 대단한 분이십니다. 지금은 뇌 과학과 두뇌 훈련 방법을 집중적으로 연구하는 뉴로짐이라는 회사를 운영하고 계십니다. 사실 제가 너무 힘들었을 때 잠재 의식을 공부하기 시작했는데 이분의 뇌 과학 연구를 보면서 정말 많은 공부를 했었고요. 인사이트를 받았습니다. 정말 닭살을 정도로 저는 오늘 기분이 좋습니다. 이스라엘의 이민자에다가 가난한 가정에서 태어났던 이분은요 어떻게 변할 수 있었을까요? 야 오늘 인터뷰하면서 이분의 그 노하우를요 진짜 씹어 먹으면서 우리도 성장합시다. Hello John, I'm so happy to meet you today. I am honored to introduce John Asarab. Welcome to our show. Kelly, thank you so much for having me. It's a joy. My English is uh, not very good, but uh, don't worry because uh, Korean people, we see with a subtitle Korean translator. No problem. I understand you perfectly. Thank you. I understood this is the first Korean interview. We are so happy to have this opportunity. Can you first introduce yourself to your Korean fans? Good. Yes. Hello. Thank you. First and foremost, um, it is my first interview for a Korean audience. And so it makes me very proud and very, very happy. I want to make sure that my life has a lot of purpose and meaning. And for the last 40 years, I've been studying the human brain. Why do I do the things that I do? Uh, why don't I do the things that I want to do or know that I should do? Like what's going on in my own mind? And in doing a lot of reading and research, I've discovered that number one, um, every brain works exactly the same way. It doesn't matter if you're English, Korean, uh, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, from any part of the world, the brain of a human works the same way. So I've made it a lifelong passion and pursuit to understand the human brain a little bit better. And then I take what I've discovered and I teach it and share it with others, whether it's through my books, um, interviews like this, whether it's speaking around the world or coaching or consulting people, I want to take my experiences to enhance the lives of people all over the world. Wow. Oh, John, you can't imagine how much I would meet you, how much time I visualization like this kind of time. I'm so happy to meet you. Thank you, John. You also built a five multi-billion dollar companies. It is uh, impressive. Can you explain what kind of company they are and how you started them? Sure. When I was... Uh... 13 to 17 years young, um, I didn't do well in school. I failed English. I failed math. I got into a lot of trouble with the law, um, which I'm sad about, but that's the truth. And uh, I met a man. Uh, I was 19 years old. And uh, he asked me, you know, what are your goals for your life? What do you want to achieve? And back then I said, uh, I want to buy a car. I want to get a good job. I want to move out of my parents' house and get my own apartment or place to live. 
And he said, that's very good, but what else do you want to achieve? And I just went, I don't know. Um, so he asked me to imagine uh, if I could have a magical, beautiful life, what would I want? And I said, I'd love a beautiful home. I would love to take care of my parents. I'd love to uh, be happy every day. I'd love to buy a car. I'd love to travel the world. I'd love to, and I, and I named a lot of things I wanted to do. And um, he says to me, he said, I'm going to ask you one question. And the answer to the one question will determine whether you're going to be healthy, happy, rich, have beautiful experiences. And I was thinking back then, Kelly, one question, really? One question. And he asked me, are you interested in achieving a wonderful, amazing life? Or are you committed to achieving a wonderful, amazing life? And back then, this was over 40 years ago, 42 years ago. I said, what's the difference? And he said to me, he says, if you're interested, you'll come up with stories and reasons and excuses why you can't. If you're interested, you will do what's easy and convenient. But if you are committed, you will upgrade your mindset. You'll upgrade your knowledge. You'll upgrade your skills. You'll upgrade your beliefs. You'll upgrade your habits so you become the person capable of achieving all of the goals you want. So he leans in and he says, so are you interested or are you committed? And I remember, Kelly, I was a little bit scared because what he said made sense. And up until that time in my life, I was interested. And I had every excuse in the book. I had every reason why I couldn't or shouldn't succeed. But in that moment, I said, I'm committed. And that moment, my life changed because I shifted from being a victim of my circumstances, a victim of my failures, a victim of my limiting beliefs, a victim of my disempowering habits. And I changed right that moment because I became committed to being happy, healthy, wealthy, and live a life of my dreams. That started me on a path to selling real estate as a real estate agent. And then I started to get better and better and better. And then I opened up my own real estate company when I was 26, seven years later. He taught me what to do. And I built that company from zero to 1,200 salespeople, 85 offices that were selling $4.5 billion a year in sales. That was my first company. Wow. So that's, that's where it began. But, but where it began was... I made a commitment to success. I made a commitment to let go of, you know, the story about my mother or father or school or the failures I've had or how dumb I was or that I didn't know how to achieve success. I had to let that go before I could start on a new path. And then I've built several other companies since then, but it was the mindset of commitment versus interested. Wow, that's an amazing story. Wow, thank you. Thank you very much. Many people these days still talk about your appearance in the movie The Secret. How did you get involved in the movie? In the movie, they read in the book that I had cut out a picture of a home. And, and that house was uh, on a Dream Homes magazine that I took the picture and I put it up on the wall. And um, five years later... I ended up buying the house that was in the magazine that I had on the vision board. And they found out about the story and wanted me to share the story of creating a vision board and how I, you know, manifested, how it, I, it, how it became from a picture to me living inside the house. And people couldn't believe it because when I cut out the picture, I didn't know where the house was. I didn't know how much the house was. I didn't know anything about it. When I cut out the picture and I looked at it every day, I said to myself, one day, I want to buy a house like that. And I ended up buying that house. It was like magic. And so they wanted me to tell the story because I think we all understand that everything is made up of energy. 
right? My body is made up of energy. Everybody who's listening or watching, you know, they're made up of hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, the elements that make up, you know, a high percentage of our body. Well, but everything in the universe is made up of energy. And so the fact that I was in vibration or resonance and ended up buying this house uh, was a pretty fascinating story. Wow. Wow. Incredible story. Do you know when I read uh, The Secret, uh, I saw this and uh, since this day, I do every year my own vision board. Oh, nice. <laughs> this is okay. last year my vision board. I get exactly the same thing. I Love. said I want one uh, electricity car. I just uh, putting in the vision board uh, the car and uh, exactly one year later, I forgot this. One year later, I bought exactly same car inside, e even color. I tried to choose many different colors. Finally, I chose exactly same car inside this. It's incredible. Wow. Well, look, you see this? This is called my exceptional life blueprint. And if you open it up, you're going to see pictures of my family that I have over oh my here. God. But then over here, oh my God. some of the life that I've created and so I might oh yeah. put down the stuff. Oh my God. Oh my God. This car right over here, I put two years ago and it's in my garage now that I've created, but I have all of my goals for what I want to achieve and what I already have achieved. I create the pictures first. But then I create the plan of how I'm going to achieve it. Incredible. Thank you so much. Do you know, John, when I saw first time in my life you hear this story, your vision board story, I was 43 years old. I felt my business. I have one million debt. I want to maybe uh, die. And then I started to really believe your story. I do vision board every year like this. The day I was uh, no job, I was uh, really uh, no money, no job. I do half a billion euros company. After five years, only five years later, I did my business. I believe you 100% or 1,000 people I believe you. Bravo, John. Thank you, Kelly. What are some helpful tips to use the vision board most effectively? Sure. What I do that's a little bit different than most people, I take everything that I've achieved and everything I want to achieve and I combine them together into a new reality of the past, the wow. present, the future. And I mesh them together so my mind sees it as one. Wow, that is good. I will do that too. Every one of us, we've accomplished so much. Our children, our friends, our family, the charities, you know, the good work that we do, um, the things we've achieved. So we want to remind ourselves that we've accomplished so much. We want to activate something called the reward center in the brain. And when we look at something that we want, we activate the reward center. When we look at something we've achieved, we activate the reward center, which releases the, the chemicals in our blood, in our body that feels good. And when we feel good, we want to take action. So everything starts with clarity. I'll give you an example. If you're in um, Korea, and you want to fly to Paris, France. You can't say, I want to go to Europe and get on an airplane in Korea. You have to say, I want to get on an airplane and I want to land at Charles de Gaulle in Paris. So you have to have the destination clear, right? Great. So what's the purpose, okay? What is the purpose of the clarity? It tells your brain, this is what. I want you to focus on. So that's part one. So first and foremost, get very clear on, you know, um, I told you I used to be overweight and unhealthy. And you know what I did? I created a picture, okay, of a man that's in his 70s and I wanted to have a physique like this. When I was fat and overweight, I still put this on my vision board because I said to my brain, this is what I want the destination, the end result to be. That's part one. Every day, okay, I would look at my pictures for health, 
for wealth, for relationship, for career, mm -hmm. for business, for charity. It's it's all here. It's all oh. here. Every day I would look at my vision board and I would instruct my brain. I want you to focus on the thoughts, the emotions, the feelings, the behaviors required to achieve that goal. That's part two. So I would look at the vision board. I would close my eyes and I would feel, okay? I would feel myself achieving those goals. Part three, what are three things that I could do right now? today to move towards the goals that I want to achieve. So first I create the clarity, then I cement it. I create the image in my brain. I emotionalize it as I visualize it. I see it happening in my mind. I feel it in my heart. And then I say, what can I do? Right? So remember mindset plus skill set plus actions create results. So that's what I do every day. Do you know why this is here? Because I still do it every day. I made a lot of resonance in relationships, in business, to, to make more money. It's something that I want to make sure we understand, right? It's not magic. So what I don't want people to do is write out their vision board and look at it every day and sit there, meditation, and expect it to just come out of thin air right? You have to do that, but also what skill do I need? What do I need to do? Whose help do I need? So you have to go and find it as it's finding you every day, every week, every month, and you have to have faith. And what faith is, is the absence of fact in the moment. I have to believe I have to believe that what I am seeking is also seeking me. A lot of people believe that, you know, if you, you know, cut out a picture, uh, you will attract it. I don't believe that. I don't think just because you cut out a picture or because you imagine, okay, that you have a nice house or car or boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife or a big company that you attract, okay? you know, those things. I want people to think a little bit differently of the law of attraction. And I want you to think of it this way. If you have a, a radio or your cell phone and you want to hear, you know, rock and roll music, you have to turn the dial to the station for rock and roll music, right? And if you don't like rock and roll music, then you turn the dial and you switch, okay, to classical music, to pop rock, to, to some different type of music, right? So we tune in to a frequency in the room that we're in or in the car that we're in using a tuner or receiver. Just like when we're playing different musical instruments, piano, guitar, saxophone, if we're playing in harmony, the music combines and sounds beautiful. But if we're not in harmony, then it sounds terrible. If we're not on the station, okay, then there might be a lot of noise and it won't sound good. So you have to get it on the station. So let's think of the law of attraction as the law of resonance or resonating on the same frequency. So let me give you an example. They're not in resonance. Let's say we want a better job, but we secretly believe that we're not smart enough or good enough or we don't have the skills. Now we don't have resonance. We have one signal, and I'm using signal as a language to explain. One signal saying, I want this, but we have another signal that's opposing that. So what we want to do is we want to get in resonance. You know, what I want with how I feel plus what I do have to be in alignment. So... When we are in alignment with thoughts, emotions, feelings, sensations, and the right behaviors, 
now we have resonance. I'll give you a different example just to, um, to make the point. You know what a safe is where you maybe hide jewelry and money you put inside and you close it? So imagine that you have a safe and inside the safe is money and jewelry and whatever things that are of value that for you. If you don't have the right combination to open up the safe, all the riches stay inside the safe. So for us to invoke the law of attraction, right? The last six letters of the word in English, attraction is what? Action. Action. So it's not any type of action. It's the right action in the right order at the right time. So I want to be thinking it. I want to feel it. And then I want to act in ways that will help resonate and attract it. And since our brain, right, is receiving information and sending out information, right, since our body is 100 trillion cells that vibrate at the level of our thought. The word emotion in English is energy in motion. So is your energy in motion to attract, to find, to resonate with what you want? Or is your body, your energy moving away from what you want because you're afraid? You don't think you're good enough. You don't think you're worthy enough. You don't think you deserve it, right? So you have to get alignment no differently than uh, a, mus a mus musicians have to play in concert, in harmony. So we want to be in harmony. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You learned that you met your mentor at the age of 19. Was that the time you learned and experienced how powerful the subconscious mind is? We would love to hear more about it, please. We know that there's the part of the brain that we say, I want that. I see that. This feels good. This feels bad. We, we know that there is a conscious, aware part of the brain. But think about this for just a moment. How are you breathing right now and you're not thinking about it? How does your body digest food and use the nutrients and you don't think about it? You just have to think, what do I want to eat, right? Um, do you think about waking up and brushing your teeth in the morning? Do you think about um, getting dressed? Do you think about putting on makeup? Do you think about how do I drive today? Very complex things. It's very hard. So we consciously do the hard things. And then our brain says, hey, since you're putting in the effort, I'm going to make it automatic. That's the subconscious mind. It's the part of the brain that takes the very hard things and makes it automatic. So we have a conscious brain and we have a subconscious brain. Now, what do we know from the science about where is the real power center? Well, we know that the subconscious controls 97 to 98% of our thoughts, our emotions, our feeling sensations, and behaviors. And in the United States, we have a saying, I'm going to see if we can trans, transfer it to, to Korean. We are all creatures of, do you know the saying? Creatures of habits right? So we go about our day based on our habits. Uh, if we smoke or don't smoke, drink or don't drink, if we're exercise or don't exercise, what we eat, when we eat, when we go to sleep, everything is based on habit patterns. Now, I think we would all agree some of our habits are good and powerful and strong, and some are weak and negative and disempower us. Well, in the brain, a habit is nothing more than a pattern that's been reinforced. Nobody, not, not one Korean, not one Canadian, not one American, not one European was born with any habits. 
We weren't born with any fears. We weren't born with any beliefs. We weren't born with a self-image of I'm good enough or I'm not good enough. We, zero. We learned all that from the time we were born from our parents and our teachers and our grandparents and our cultures, right? So the question is, can I change my subconscious patterns to be able to believe that I am worthy of making more money, building a company, writing a book, having a great relationship. We can change our subconscious patterns now based on what we've discovered in neuroscience. So the subconscious is the power center, but we all become conditioned to expect certain things. We all become conditioned to fear certain things. We all become conditioned to believe certain things. Well, are the things that we believe the truth or are the things that we believe our truth? Are the things that I feel I deserve reality or are the things that I feel that I deserve based on what I've been conditioned to believe I deserve? Whether I'm a man or a woman, whether I have a college education or I don't, there's a lot of constructs in our brain that are so disempowering, destructive, and negative for a lot of people. But what we have to understand is we now know how to change the subconscious pattern, to get rid of old, disempowering, um, destructive patterns sometimes and replace them just like we replace software on our computer or our cell phones. We upgrade the software, we update the software, can you tell us about your life before and after applying the subconscious mind? You know what? About uh, 13 years ago, I weighed uh, 20 more kilos than I weigh now, 45 pounds heavier. My I was drinking too much alcohol. I was eating poorly. I wasn't exercising as much. I had health mm -hmm. conditions um, and I decided to yeah. exercise to change all that. So mm -hmm. I lost 45 pounds or 20 kilos. I got healthy. I stopped drinking alcohol. I stopped eating refined sugar. Uh, and I got really, really healthy by training my brain using the latest, you know, in neuroscience. And that's why I'm so passionate about this. It's because we have a brain. If you think about this, it's worth over 100 billion US dollars. But how many people have a user's manual? How do I use my brain? Most people, no. what do you mean? How do I use my brain? We know how to use our computers and our phones better than our own brain. So what I get to do now is research and then teach and share and write and, um, and give people the, the user's manual to use their $100 billion brain that they already own. Wow, absolutely. We try to learn how we use a phone, how we use a computer, but we never try to learn more how we use my subconscious mind and conscious mind. You are absolutely right. This is so powerful. I mean, if you think about it, we do not have a computer anywhere in the world that is more powerful than the human brain. So here's the question. Every human being has a brain, right? Now, mm. if you already have a brain, why not learn how to use it better? Because it's the most powerful tool you have. We don't think that way. But, but now we're at a point in humanity where people are starting to pay attention and listen. Because we have now computers that can see inside the human brain. They can see the electrical activity. They can see the release of neurochemicals. They, they can decode every thought. We, we, we can now look at an image and a computer, you know, that's looking at our brain can tell us what the image is that we're looking at. So we have um, at our fingertips now the, the beginning of, you know, what I call as an inner size revolution, right? where we can deliberately and consciously choose to become better. We have so much potential, but nobody's taught us from the time we are born, how do I unleash and release the potential that's already in me? 
if people are listening to this or watching right now, the reason that they're here is something inside of them is telling them there's there has to be something that I could learn, that I could do better, that I could do differently to let go of what is holding me hostage, like I'm in a prisoner, right? And set me free. Well, I can tell you the answer is in learning more about what's causing you to hold on to your past, what's causing you to be afraid, what's causing you to feel like you're less than the other person, what's causing you to feel like you can't really choose to let go of the things that you know disempower you. Let go of the things that um, cause you pain and suffering. Let go of the trauma from the past. Let go of past failures. Let go of fear of being embarrassed or ashamed or ridiculed. Or just, let's let go of the things that hold us back and let's grab onto the things that will move us forward for our own lives, for our spouse, our children, humanity. We've conquered pl other planets. We have we have learned how to um, uh, uh, fix so many problems in the world so far. And you think you're not good enough and not smart enough and not worthy and incapable. It's not true. So they're here because they know that there's more to their lives. And what I'm going to share, and I think you know this, Kelly, is it is the difference between knowing consciously and then doing, which is based on your subconscious patterns. Many of you are Korean fans read your co-author book, The Answer. Can you explain the overall message of this book? What would you say is the one key takeaway from this book? Sure. So the book, The Answer, was specifically for business owners and for business owners who want to grow their business. And there's there's three parts, I think, to every business. But number one, we have to have the right mindset, right? That we have to have the clarity of what we want to build. We have to have, you know, the the attitude and the tenacity, the resolve that I'm going to build this business. Mindset. Number two, what is the skill set? Because in every business, there is uh, marketing, there's selling, there's management, there's finance, there's systems, there's process, there's very, very specific skills for sales, marketing, management, finance, legal, technology. And so we need to know the skill set for the level of business that we want to build. But then number three, is the actions that are required. So you could sit with a great mindset, you can sit with a very, very good skill set, but unless you take action and tweak and adjust every day, every week, every month, you're not gonna achieve the success you want because business is very, very, you know, up and down and flows. Things work, things don't work. You have to change this, change that, try this, try that. And so, we have to have the mindset, the skill set, and the action set. And when we create the alignment between the vision and the goals, the strategies, what we need to do, right? And then we take action, business becomes more predictable. So I like to say that the answer gives you the path to take the possibility of business growth and make it a predictability instead. The problem is most people don't realize that there are several different parts to, you know, growing a business. And, you know, in today's day and age, right, today, it's 2023, we know how to build a business. So if we know how to build a business, then it's my job to learn how. That starts with my mindset. So the answer takes into consideration the skills you need, the mindset you need, but then there's the other part of it, and that is there is the unseen world, right, that we live in. There's the physical world where we can hear, see, smell, taste, and touch, physical world. But there's also an unseen world that we're interacting with because we're in what we call is the field of intelligence, the field of all possibilities, so our job is to create the clarity of what it is we want to achieve 
and then to have the attitude, the mindset, the skill set, and the behaviors to follow through no matter how hard it gets. And you're a perfect example of what's possible that you did in five years. Thank you, thank you. Oh, this day, what keeps making VG today for you? Last, uh, yeah. So my current company is called NeuroGym, myneurogym.com. Mm -hmm. And we create programs to train people's brains to have more confidence, more certainty, more personal power, to believe that they are worthy of the success that they want. So we do a lot of brain training through our programs to help people really create the neural patterns in their brain for self-worth, self-image, self-esteem, for confidence, for certainty, to develop empowering, constructive beliefs and habits. Plus, we teach them the skills to make more money, the skills to build their business, the skills to get rid of fear of failure or fear of being embarrassed or ashamed or ridiculed or judged. We help them develop empowering beliefs that they can achieve the success and they deserve to achieve the success. And so we coach them on how to do this using the latest in neuroscience, brain research, and neuropsychology of how the brain works. And so now we have you know, hundreds of thousands of students all over the world who are training their brains either through our app. We have a, an app called Inner Size um, Inner that Size. is coming out. Yeah, Inner Size. And just like, you know, you can exercise to make your muscles strong. Wow. Think of Inner Size to make your brain's muscles strong. Wow, it's fascinating. It's coming out very, very soon. We just finished oh. working on it for one year. Wow, bravo. 